you can be seated if you want to tonight. It's really quiet in this place. Y'all are y'all are quiet. <laughs> Thank you, Bradley. <laughs> so tonight, I'm not going to piggyback off of what I talked about Sunday, but it actually, if you go back and if you go back and look at the verses that I use, uh, it's a little bit further down in the uh, in the chapter of Matthew. Of course, uh, Sunday morning I talked about Jesus feeding the five thousand, and you know how we need to have a hunger for Him to come do great things, um, because of course, if there is a need that is great, our God is greater. But you've got to be hungry for Him to come, and fill that need so of course I'm, I'm sitting there reading you know through Matthew because um, that was part of the reading that I was doing and I got a few verses down and I got into the passage that I'm going to use tonight so I'm going to come again from Matthew 14 but this time I'm going to be starting with verse 25 uh, I think this is going to be a pretty familiar story with everybody so, I don't mean to bore you, but trust me, it does serve a purpose. It says, starting with verse 25, it says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw what the, that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. When I start to think about that, that verse, or those, those verses right there, there's a lot of things that, that stick out to me. And one of the things is that, you know, they're out there, on the water, and Jesus is far away off. They can't really see. All they can see is what looks like a man walking on the water. But they didn't know it was him. And they started to get a little afraid because he was, as I said, a ways off. So he wasn't in clear sight. They couldn't see him very well at that time. So they started to get afraid, and they, they cried out. And Jesus said, you know what? It's okay. It's, it's me. You don't have to worry. And then when Peter saw that it was him, saw what Jesus was doing, saw that he was walking on the water towards them, he said, Lord, if it's you, he said, command me to come to you on the water. And notice when Jesus gave the word, all he said was, come. All he said was, come. And Peter got out of the boat. Now, I've got to think that that, that first step, that had to be a little crazy, getting out of that boat, knowing that you're stepping on the water. I can't, I can't imagine it. Because every time I've been on water, if I step out, I'm going down. I've never walked on water before. All right. But Peter got out of the boat. You know, one of the, one of the great things about this story is that, you know, I know that Jesus says, Peter, you know, oh, you of little faith. But Peter was courageous. You know, I'm wondering why. When, when the other disciples, when they saw that Peter was walking on water, why didn't they all get out there? 
I mean, if I, if I saw that, you know, one of my peers was out there walking on water with Jesus, I'd have wanted to get out of the boat too. But Peter was the only one that got out of the boat. And that amazes me. But Peter got out on the water and starts walking on the water, just like Jesus. And, you know, I begin to think about the fact that, you know, that Jesus said that, you know, we have that same power inside of us. We've got the same power to perform miracles. We've got the same power to perform healings. And apparently, we've got the same power to walk on water. And he's out there walking on the water with Jesus. But notice when everything starts to starts happening around him, the wind starts to pick up. The waves start to pick up. That's when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. He took his eyes off of him. And as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. And it wasn't until then that he began to sink. Peter was too worried about the circumstances going on around him, the condition of things going on around him, and he lost his vision. And what I want to talk to us about tonight is our vision. I want to talk to us about is, is Jesus in your sights? Because if Jesus is in your sights, then He can do greater things with you and through you than you ever thought you know, imaginable or you know, possible. And it's obvious in this story because Peter is walking on water. And I just can't help but think about the fact that, you know, we've got all these different things around us. You know, the enemy's job is to get our eyes off of Jesus with all these other things that are going on around us, all these distractions. And the enemy's good at it, real good at getting our eyes off of Jesus. Because he knows if he can get our eyes off of Jesus, then that's when we're going to begin to sink. If we've got our attention focused somewhere else instead of where it should be, that's when things are going to start to crumble in our life. Things are going to start to fall apart. But notice that when, when Peter started to sink, he crumbled.